Hello guys, in this video we'll be looking at the DNA results, predicted appearance, traits and GD match results of a Barsin Neolithic farmer from Turkey, from Anatolia. This Neolithic farmer had Y-DNA I2A, which is nowadays most common uh, in the Balkans, and his mitochondrial DNA was N1, I don't know where it's most common. But the reason I'm making this video is because somebody suggested it to me, and of course, uh, it's an interesting sample because it's predicted to have light features. YSEC actually predicts this individual to have blonde hair and blue eyes at a very high percentage likelihood of blonde hair, like extremely high likelihood, extremely high likelihood of blue eyes too. Uh, but that's because YSEC only really looks at one variation to determine hair and eye color, and it's the variation BH2 variation. And this individual had two derived variants in BH2. However, uh, he probably did not have blonde hair, did not have blue eyes. In fact, Snipper Free predicts him to have brown eyes, black hair, and white skin. And Maito also predicts him to have brown eyes and black hair. That's because he did not have the BH1 mutation. It's kind of interesting, right? How do you have the BH2 mutation but not the BH1? Because, I mean, it, it is literally a linked region. How do you have this mutation without having the other? I don't understand this because uh, I've never seen um, somebody have two derived variants in BH2 without having any in BH1. That's just a very surprising genotype. According to his genotype in DRD2's pro pro variant, he was a no-go learner uh, with a decreased risk of schizophrenia, which is kind of uh, very stereotypically European uh, genotype. And he was a warrior, with a which is a stereotypically non-European genotype, which is kind of interesting. Uh, the implications of having the warrior with the IO genotype is that he had quicker reuptake of dopamine, which means less dopamine in the system, which means uh, problems with attention and motivation. However, uh, advantages when it comes to stress resiliency. And he actually did have derived OXTR, which is the closest we have to the sociopath gene. So this individual had reduced oxytocin uh, expression in the brain and more likely to be a sociopath. Uh, he did not have the European lactose persistence mutation and was most likely uh, lactose intolerant as an adult. Uh, moving on, he had uh, no EDAR, no derived EDAR, which means no uh, East Asian facial traits such as shovel-shaped incisors. When it comes to polygenic traits and uh, illnesses, he had a pretty high, like slightly above average risk score for coronary heart disease. He had an average risk score for type 2 diabetes. Um, moving on, he had an average or a slightly above average risk score for bipolar disorder. And he had an average risk score for Parkinson's disease. And he also had a below average risk score for schizophrenia. On GZ match, this is what he scores with MDLPK11. Very interesting result because... Um, Aside from the Neolithic and the Basil and the African that he's scoring, he's also scoring 7% Caucasus-related admixture. By the way, EHG here, the EHG category on this calculator represents Caucasus-related stuff. So with the Oracle, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Greek Neolithic plus Levant Neolithic or Natufian, uh, which is kind of... And I guess this is accurate because Anatolian Neolithic farmers could probably be represented as a mixture of Greek Neolithic plus Natufian. This is what he scores with Pun DNA LK12. Uh, don't dwell on the result too much because I've noticed that it's typical for Anatolian farmers to score a bunch of gibberish like European HG and Caucasus HG here. Uh, look at the Oracle though. The Oracle is saying that this person is getting modeled as a mixture of LBK and Neolithic, which is European farmer, plus Satsurblia or Cotias Kide, which is um, Caucasus hunter gatherer. So it's a little bit more shifted towards the Caucasus relative to European farmers. And this is what he scores with uh, Ancient Eurasia K6 by Gidrosia. Now, I think that the Western European hunter-gatherer as a group here is not meant to represent actual Western European hunter-gatherers, guys, because I think uh, it's meant to represent some kind of a Northern European genetic drift, because Northern Europeans score way too much of this category, like 60% plus. And he's closest with the Oracle to Anatolian Neolithic, which is not, not so surprising. But what is surprising is the mixed mode population sharing, where... Take a look at line 8, which is modeling him as a mixture of Anatolian Neolithic plus Tajik. And Tajiks are much more ancient North Eurasian than, obviously, Anatolian Neolithic reference here. And line 18, which is Anatolian Neolithic plus Afontova Gara 3. So clearly, he's a little bit more shifted towards ancient North Eurasians than the reference for Anatolian Neolithic on this calculator. This is what he scores with Gidrosia K3. Uh, we can clearly see that this is a modern individual who has a lot of modern West Eurasian drift. Uh, so... Actually, what's interesting is if you look at this timeline, if you look at the Mesolithic and Neolithic individuals from Europe, they have a lot less modern drift than this individual from Anatolia. And uh, this is his result with Eurogenes K13, and you can tell by looking at these results, this is, this is a very modern drifted individual. He's not scoring any Sub-Saharan African, no Oceanian, no East Asian, none of these ancient components that, for example, Cromanians would score. 
And with the Oracle, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Sardinian plus Yemenite Jewish or Sardinian plus Lebanese. Basically a mixture of something from Sardinia plus Eastern Mediterranean region. This is the final calculator I'm going to show you guys, but it's also a very interesting calculator, MDLP World Ancient Roots K10. I'm using it on all my ancient uh, groups now. Uh, but you can see that he's scoring 1.3% archaic men, and this is the category that Neanderthal, Denisovan, and Chimpanzee that I've run through this calculator has scored. Like, for example, Chimpanzee scored 99% of this archaic man category. So I'm thinking this archaic man, uh, it's a very interesting group, and it's very interesting that this, Sard this Sardinian-like individual is scoring 1.3% of it. So maybe this is like 1.3% of Neanderthal admixture, I'm not sure how to interpret this. Thank you guys for watching until the end, and you can download the sample in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. By the way, one thing you will uh, find when you explore this file, which I failed to mention in the video, I was just busy talking about other stuff, is that ac he actually had some uh, derived variants in MC1R, uh, which is like the ginger gene, which is kind of interesting.